What's up Simonix, welcome back to a new vlog video and as you can see I'm in a new office. We recently moved to a new house, um, might share a few stories about that so that's the new background you're gonna see in the future videos or perhaps that direction which is basically my computer. But today we're not going to talk about uh, house building tips, we're going to talk about ionic bug hunting strategies. In the past I had a video about some generic general strategies to eliminate bugs in your code but you are for more specific ionic strategies so here we are today some of the things that you're going to see in this video might be new something might be pretty obvious to you already but in general it's a good idea to remind yourself about the different strategies and tools you got to find the bugs and fix problems within your ionic code so just as sometimes sleeping about a bug can really help to fix the issue immediately this video is a reminder for your brain with a few old and new bug hunting strategies for ionic so let's do this <laughs> Alright, so tip number one might be pretty obvious, but use a decent IDE. I use Visual Studio Code since, I don't know, quite some years now and I'm happy with it. There are other great IDEs, um, there's Sublime, there's Atom, there's WebStorm, um, well, there's a lot more. The important thing is to have code linting right inside your IDE. I can't tell you how many problems I've seen where it's just, if I put the code that you added in the bug into my own editor, I will immediately see the problem. You're accessing a wrong property, something that doesn't exist in the wrong kind of way. Use a decent IDE that will already fix like 90% of the general bugs that you can actually make. Once you got a decent IDE, I would highly recommend to use Ionic Surf as long as possible. Simply because Ionic Surf is kind of close to the reality most of the time. You can even have an iOS or Android preview with some debugging tools. Surf is really quite fast. You get the live reload all the time. Um, you also got live reload with capacitor in some cases, but more on devices later. So I would really recommend to try Ionic Surf and debugging inside your browser as long as possible as you got all the tools right at hand. You can do everything really fast within the debugging tools of your browser. And while you're using Ionic Surf, let me tell you one thing. Restarting the Ionic Surf command can fix a lot of problems. Uh, sometimes the Angular compiler or something going on isn't just picking up my updates. I had this for a time when it was like all the time. Right now I have it whenever I have the surf open and generate a new page uh, provider service anything that it won't pick up the new stuff. So restarting your surf or live reload or whatever you got is always a good idea if you have like a very strange bug. So then you got your surf open and you encounter a problem and the very first thing that you should do is read carefully the message. Let me repeat it, read the whole error message. In a lot of cases the error message is pretty great as it already tells you please put something into whatever. Um, there are a lot of angular messages that are not that obvious but sometimes there's really like the exactly the description of what you should do. Uh, some packages like angular fire have a link to a github issue or anything like this. So always don't just look at it as a red bug that you don't know how to fix. Read carefully through the message. And also, sometimes there's a difference between a warning and an error. A warning means, well, this isn't too good, but it's not really a problem at this point. Of course, at some point you should fix that warning because it's not too good to have too many warnings in your code, but usually, um, well, you can kind of really ignore the warning at that point. You can think about it when you got time, but a warning is never an indicator of a problem uh, that crashes your application. That would always be an error. A warning is never the, uh, the reason for why your code isn't working. So now you got an error, you don't know how to fix it, uh, you read the message, it wasn't very obvious because you might not be uh, too experienced with Angular or React or something, uh, any framework you pick with Ionic yet. In that case, it's always a good idea to find exactly the line of code where the problem happens first of all because uh, you get call like five or ten different functions and at some point something breaks and it's really hard to find out if you post a question like this online um, I can't retrieve my token well here's my uh, 200 lines of code authentication service that's not going to help 
Really, the error message, usually, if you have source maps, source maps enabled, will tell you the line where your code breaks. And at that line, well, that's the problem. And once you find out that line, or in general, a function that might be the reason why your code is crashing, I would recommend to extract this part of your functionality into a blank new project. I've seen a lot of cases where people had huge projects and there was an error, and in the end, the error was related to some strange package that might be at a completely different place in your code. Uh, you might have seen this with Cordova in the past and plugin, plugins having problems with each other. Putting that one block of code into a blank project and seeing if there's still the error is always a good idea. For example, you can't capture an image for whatever reason. Now you bring up a blank project and you do the same things and you can capture an image. So that is a great indicator that the actual code for capturing the image works, but there might be some other part in your code that's uh, coming, well, kind of not working with the image. Maybe it's just the base64 spring is wrong or any kind of a problem like that. Isolating the line of code, the function, or just a part of your application into a blank project is really a great idea to see if that is really the problem or the other part of your project might actually also uh, take place in this issue somehow. Now one thing I always did uh, kind of wrong in the beginning was searching for ionic input field not working like this with Google and that's actually the wrong approach to bugs because usually in well let's say 95% of the time the problem isn't really the Ionic part, but the actual framework like Angular, React or Vue. And therefore, it's a better idea to search for Angular input field not working. You will get like a hundred times more results if you search for the specific framework as people with Angular, React, Vue already encountered that problem and it might not be really related to Ionic. You will see uh, Ionic questions on Stack Overflow or in the community, but a lot of the times uh, it's really about the underlying framework that you pick. So searching for the specific framework you use with the problem might help to find the real solution that was already served by the community of that framework. Another big issue that I see uh, a lot of people make is not understanding promises and observables. Um, you should first of all really understand how async code works. If you come from a different language that's not using that concept, um, it might be hard to understand first, but it's really important to get the concept. And then the second one is to understand the difference between promises and observables. We have a great course on that topic inside the Ionic Academy. It helped a lot of people because this is really something that you 100% need to get right. If you subscribe to a promise, if you combine promises and observables and you try to log out function or you actually don't know what await means and you're confused why some code is executed and something else at a later point and then your values are not set, everything like this is related to understanding promises and observables. And if you encounter problems uh, with ASIN code from time to time, please take like half a day to really get into that concept. It is actually not too hard. Get into it, check out inside the Ionic Academy if you're a member or not, uh, join the Ionic Academy, you know the game. In the beginning I said you should develop as long as possible with Ionic Surf. That's right, but once you start to use plugins, either Cordova or Capacitor, you should really debug in the right environment. For example, you use the Capacitor Flyle plugin. This might work inside your browser as well as it has a browser implementation, but the implementation inside the browser on iOS and Android is definite, definitely different. And therefore, once you encounter a problem, you might not even have the problem with Ionic Surf, but you have the problem on a real device. And therefore, at that point, it is time to debug on a real device. Capacitor offers a great live reload on iOS and Android that you can use, which gives like all the benefits you already have with Ionic Surf. Once you come to that point, it is important to debug in the right environment, which means on a real device. Something like push notifications is just not going to work inside your browser, you need a device. Actually, I got a full video on debugging Ionic applications in different environments with remote debugging, and I will link to it below the video. Check it out if you need some more 
uh, concrete steps and tools to debug your applications. Also, when you work with something like the SQLite database, uh, it might be hard to debug this, but you can actually get the full app container on iOS through Xcode, you can export it. On Android, you can use the ADB tools to uh, run the shell and export the files of your application. So there's always the possibility to really look inside the files of your app container on a device. And of course, if you're using Cordova or Capacitor plugins and some native part isn't working, you can always use the debugging tools of Xcode or Android Studio. You can set breakpoints, you just need to find out the right files, but those are usually inside a plugins folder. So you can easily really add the, uh, the breakpoints to the data of plugins and step through the code. You don't have to understand the whole uh, Swift code or Java code for a plugin, but it can be really helpful to see at which point of a plugin your code actually stops or why a value is null or why something is passed in a wrong way or handled incorrectly. So stepping into the native plugins into Xcode and Android Studio can be really helpful to find issues that don't appear inside Ionic Surf. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the strategies discussed in this video. Of course, there's not a fix for everything. Sometimes you just need to look up uh, on GitHub, Angular, Ionic, React, or whatever you're using. There might be an open bug and that might be exactly your problem. So hopefully it's gonna be fixed very soon or you can contribute to uh, fixing those bugs, of course, as well. And in some cases, there's just not a fix like uh, using push notifications inside an iOS progressive web app that's just not working at the moment. Perhaps in the future, some things will just not work. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you spend a day or a week on it, it just won't work. But being persistent and picking the right strategy can really help to save a lot of time for you, for your company, and also help you advance in your field as you become like the expert in your company on fixing Ionic bugs, perhaps. Is there anything else that I might have missed? Uh, tools or services that you're using to find bugs faster? Please, if you have anything let us know in the comments and share uh, your ideas around the topic so we can all become better at fixing bugs which is like 50% of your daily job anyway right have a great week of not too many nasty bugs and I will catch you next week in my new environment which I really love so far and I hope you enjoy it too might improve the sound a bit more but that's it for today have a great week and happy coding Simon <laughs>